Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined today by Alison Kennedy, who is the director of the Hartree Centre. Alison has been leader of the Hartree Centre since 2016, and in that time, she's been a powerful driving force behind the Hartree Centre's development, which has seen the centre growing from 12 to over 110 members of staff during her leadership. In 2021, she led the team to successfully secure over £200 million of government funding to build on Hartree's track record of applied industrial research and to establish the Hartree National Centre for Digital Innovation. In this conversation, uh, we hope she will share some of her experiences and lessons learned from the application of advanced digital technologies to the big industrial challenges facing the UK. Hello, Alison, and welcome. Good morning, Tony. Thanks for spending time with us. Could I start off by asking you to say a few words about your role at the Hartree Centre, please? Of course. So the Hartree Centre is a department of the UK's National Laboratories. It's part of the Science and Technology Facilities Council. So the role of our department is to support industry in the adoption of new technologies, particularly high performance computing, high performance data analytics, AI, and we're beginning to investigate the potential of quantum computing uh, for industry. So we, we work very closely with, with a whole range of, of industry partners, from very large companies to very small companies. We also work with government and we have a range of technology partners. Yeah, great. Well, look, I, I know the Hartree Centre is coming up to its 10th anniversary and uh, looking back, it's been a decade of profound change in terms of the economy, society and above all technology. As the leader of Hartree, you must have observed many big changes during your time as the leader of the organisation. But for you, where has Hartree's contribution to the adoption of advanced IT by UK industry given you most satisfaction? I think looking back, Tony, um, one of the things that, that's difficult to immediately grasp is that when the Hartree Centre started out 10 years ago, the idea of high performance computing being adopted and being used by industry in a whole range of areas was really, really novel and really exciting. I mean, at that time, supercomputers were really a tool for scientific research and they were really portrayed as being something that's very, very expensive, very difficult to use and that could only be adopted by a very small minority of scientists with a huge amount of experience in, in difficult computing simulation and modelling problems. So for the Hartree Centre, one of the really big things has been to look at that technology and say, how can we make it much more accessible to a much wider range of people? What can we do there? How can we understand what some of these industrial challenges are? And can we work with people so that we can apply all the power of, of advanced computing to these challenges and see if we can really bring about benefits for UK industry? I understand. So in, in simple terms, you're looking to apply that advanced computing to provide and enable innovation by industry. And one of the things I guess we all know who've been involved in innovation for any length of time is that whilst technology is obviously vitally important, it's often human beings with all their complexities that are vital to the successful adoption of any technology. So as a leader of an organisation of over 100 people and who are actively involved in that innovation, what lessons have you learned about how best to engage people in accelerating adoption of technology and particularly digitalisation? I think that there's a number of answers to that question. So I, th I think the first thing um, that we realised is that it's relatively easy for people who are excited by technology to engage with people who are excited by technology in industry. However, if you want that technology to be adopted and to be rolled out, then you need to engage the hearts and minds of a whole range of people who are working in industry, their funders, their customers, the whole and, and the supply chains. So it's not just about having a good technology solution, it's about ensuring that the people you work with can understand the power of digital transformation. 
and how adopting digital solutions will benefit their businesses. Um, and that, that, that's on a, a spectrum which goes from training and education. So, so one of the things we're looking to do is to work with people at all levels in companies um, to make them aware of what can AI do for them, what can simulation and modelling do for them, uh, what, are, what are we doing with, with, in analysing data, um, what are the benefits that we can bring from all this wealth of information that they have in the company so that they feel part of the project. So our projects are not about somebody coming in and doing something for a company um, using our super technology powers and our expertise. They're about building teams which will work collaboratively with our partners so that we can get the best results for them out of that. So we're, when we look to take people on, we're not just looking for people who have good technology skills, we're looking for people who are good communicators, who, who have an interest in challenges and in problems, who don't just want to develop a very deep expertise in one area, but who are looking to see how that expertise could be applied in a range of new areas to a range of new challenges. Well, that's really interesting to understand the importance of people from your perspective in terms of the experience you've garnered in those collaborations. Um, and I know that um, during your time at Hartree, you've been an enthusiastic sponsor of, of building effective teams and also as a sponsor of equality, diversity and inclusion. So what role do you think that can play in forming the effective collaborations with your partners and clients? I think it's important that the technology teams that we have reflect society at large. If we're going to effectively tackle uh, a whole range of, of challenges from environmental um, to societal to productivity, then we need to have people who understand what these challenges are, who come from a variety of backgrounds, who reflect the society round about us. Also, from a practical point of view, um, the areas that we are working in have a shortage of applicants. Um, there's not as many people in the UK who have um, science, technology, engineering and mathematical skills. We need to be as open as possible to saying what's absolutely essential for this job and what can we teach people. So, so I'm really pleased that over the years I've been in Hartree, we've, we've come to a much more diverse set of people working on the projects. And I think this has really benefited us in, in terms of being able to understand and contribute to some of the challenges that we're working with. That's really interesting. And I suppose that often when we're talking about issues of equality and diversity, um, then we often are also these days thinking about the, the notion of equalising economic opportunities across the UK. And this has led to great discussions about not only opportunity, but also skills and particularly the importance of STEM skills and thinking uh, along the lines about the diversity um, issue that you've just been talking about, do you, there is a, other people are now starting to say, or some people are saying there's a need to extend that thinking to include people, not just with STEM skills, but those with more creative or artistic thinking in order to develop better solutions. So from your wide experience of driving technology adoption, what changes are you anticipating in terms of what will be needed in skills and collaboration to drive innovation to solve the big economic, environmental and social challenges in the years ahead? Well, one, one of the moves in the UK is to move beyond thinking just about STEM skills, so where STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths, and to something known as STEAM, where you're adding into that mix arts. So the idea there is that it's important to educate people about, about what the possibilities are, to make it as, as easy as possible for them to understand what the results of particular projects are. So to this end, we, we're bringing in people who have a, an understanding of social media, uh, people who work on the visualisation side of things. One of our big investments has been uh, in, in a visualisation suite where we can bring the results of many of our, pro of our projects to life um, in a really visual way because we know that, that for the vast majority of people um, being able to see something on a screen is much, makes it much more easy to understand um, than looking at statistics somewhere. So for us um, 
in, in, everything from infographics to advanced visualization to um, films about our work, anything which helps to get over the message about the power of these new technologies and to spark interest in, in people coming along and thinking, wow, that's really great. I wonder if these techniques could be applied to my particular problem. So we do have a much wider range of people working on our projects now. It's not just about people with, with very strong scientific backgrounds. Obviously, we do need them, but we need to complement that with a range of other skills. So that's really interesting, the fact that you're talking there about bringing together not just uh, equality and diversity of background and experience, but also in terms of bringing together STEM and the creative arts in order to develop maybe slightly broader and hopefully richer solutions to some of the challenges. And it's also interesting in this conversation we're having this morning that um, so far we've spent a lot of time talking about people, which I think is really interesting for someone who's a leader of a technology organisation. I think that's a, a really important point. Um, however, it would be remiss of me um, if as we're talking to you and leading the Hartree Centre and one of the UK's most employed one of the UK's most important applied technology research organisations, not to talk about the topic of technology. You're in a great position to see the innovative technologies being developed by your team and also your broad range of technology partners. So moving on to that, as we move forward to the next decade of Hartree's work, which of those technologies that you're beginning to see uh, are you most excited about and why? I think there's, there's a huge amount to be excited about, Tony. Um, so at one level, it's about seeing how the existing technologies can be applied in an increasingly large number of areas. You know, for example, we are now at a stage where we can, we can visualise parts of the human body, which makes it much easier for doctors to diagnose particular problems. So I think the advances in personalised medicine are something to be very excited about. Um, in terms of new technology, we're beginning to investigate quantum computing, which is, is a completely different new form of computing, which will enable us to look at some problems which cannot be solved on current uh, mainstream computers. So I, there's, there's, there's just an awful lot to be excited about. And of course, the application of AI in conjunction with, with both simulation and modeling and with analyzing data opens up new possibilities. So for people coming into the industry now, I think there's a huge range of opportunities. I think you can contribute coming in from a, a whole lot of different backgrounds. It's a very exciting time to be coming in and to be looking at the opportunities. One of the things that was very important for us in terms of getting companies together to talk about their problems was the collaboration that we had with Cambium. Together with them, we organized a number of workshops where we could get together people um, either with similar challenges or who were working in the same industry to talk about challenges that they had which cut across um, competitive elements, so something that was important to an entire industry or to an entire sector. So being able to talk to these companies or these organisations together helped us to focus down on what particular challenges would be useful um, and then we worked with Cambian to follow up with these people to try and define some particular projects. So I think that was important for us in helping to accelerate um, the setting up of some of our newest projects. That sounds great. So in terms of um, coming to some sort of conclusion, I really appreciate the time you've given us today. Um, I suppose if we, if you look back across your long and successful career uh, in, a, in driving the adoption of leading edge technology and thinking about the people focus that we've had to this conversation this morning, what advice would you give to those interested in using technology to make the world a better place? There's plenty of problems out there. We switch on the news. We see problems everywhere from everything from the environment to social problems. But for those who are maybe setting out on their journey, um, what advice would you offer to them who, who are interested in using technology to make the world a better place? I think that the, the, the biggest piece of advice is to stay curious. I mean, when I look back 
I can see that the technology and the opportunities have changed hugely over the past 40 years. So for anyone coming in now, it's very, very unlikely that you'll be doing a similar job in five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years time. So you have to be adaptable. Um, you have to think about where the technology is going and about how you can apply it in new areas. Many of the jobs that we are now recruiting for are jobs which really didn't exist five or 10 years ago. Um, you know, for example, we bring in a lot of people um, with AI skills. Okay, there was AI five years ago, but nothing like on the scale it is now. We have people who are coming in as social media experts, visualization experts. So I think, think about what you, you're interested in, think about what skills you can develop, um, be enthusiastic, be open to learning new ideas, and you will then be part of, definitely be part of the solution. We're really dependent on people to seek to come up with new ideas for how the technology can be applied. So if you're that sort of a person, this is a perfect area to be coming into. That's fantastic. Well, what a great way to end. Thanks very much indeed for your time today, Alison. It's been a really interesting conversation. And uh, thanks again. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Tony.